I got so caught up in like what kind of terminology I was supposed to be using and being politically correct, like like because <laughs> um, like like I that that but like it's just like and 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 so saying like I was like, wow. Nerderotic.com. To borrow a phrase from my good friend Ichibaka, Disney Star Wars is dumb. So I wasn't surprised at all to hear that we will be getting a new live action female centric Star Wars TV show as opposed to all of the other non-female centric Star Wars we have gotten from Disney since they purchased George Lucas's franchise. The biggest franchise of all time. It will never have an equal. The way things are set up in Hollywood right now, you will never, ever see anything like Star Wars again. And Disney has scuttled it, destroyed it, absolutely pulverized it beyond recognition yet they still need to make money on it. Now, before I get started, I would like to express my gratitude for everyone who has subscribed to the channel and supported me over the years. And I would like to ask you to please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and like and share the videos. It really does help independent creators stay competitive against the giant corporations and the mainstream media that YouTube is most definitely prioritizing right now on this platform. Now, Disney is the unquestioned leader. They have been on the forefront. They have found new, innovative, groundbreaking ways to think out of the box when it comes to destroying franchises. And quite frankly, it's been a comedy of errors and anything they do well, it's by accident. And the Mandalorian might just be that. Again, we'll talk about that later. Why am I talking about Disney Star Wars at all? Because again, I am in the apathy camp. I do not care what happens to this franchise anymore because it's not even a shadow of its former self. It's completely different. And that's the problem Disney Star Wars has right now. So I'm not really angry when I hear that they're going to come out with a female-centric live-action Star Wars TV show on Disney Plus that's going to take place in a different or alternate timeline, let's go to the source article Variety. Star Wars series from Russian Doll co-creator and former Harvey Weinstein assistant Leslie Headland in the works at Disney Plus exclusive. A new Star Wars series is in the works at Disney Plus. Variety has learned from sources this just in, these sources are well-placed geographical sources because according to some YouTubers out there, the sources have to be in LA to be good sources. If you're not in LA, your sources are illegitimate because sources in LA walk the streets going, hey buddy, you wanna hear about Star Wars? The series hails from Leslie Hedlund, the co-creator, showrunner, and executive producer of the critically acclaimed Netflix series, Russian Doll. Haven't seen it, can't say much about it. Details of the exact plot of the series are being kept under wraps because they don't have one. But sources, those well-placed sources that are hanging out at the Del Taco near John Wayne Airport on Hollywood Way, it will be a female-centric series that takes place in a different part of the Star Wars timeline than other projects. Well, I've heard alternate timeline, and I've heard different part of the timeline now, and since it said that in the source article, my guess is it's probably going to be a prequel, and my guess is the only concept they have of this show is that it's female-centric. I doubt they have a named character, a concept design, or even a story at this point. Hedlund is said to be attached to write and serve as showrunner on the series with the show currently staffing. Disney has been remarkable. Right after hiring Miss Death to Western canon herself, Dana Schwartz, we get Leslie Hedlund again, former assistant to Harvey Weinstein and the person who said this. I would say that, like, I, I think white women need to kind of step up their game, to be quite honest. Like, to really, you know, I, I reached out to my, you know, um, uh, the, the women that I respect who, are, who are, are not white. I find the timing of this announcement interesting. And I think the key word here is this series is in development, just like the Boba Fett movie was in development. And that Dan and Dave trilogy was in development. And like the Rian Johnson trilogy is supposedly still in development. And of course, there's the Obi-Wan show that's on and off. And I think back on again, you could tell me in the comments, but I really wouldn't care. And of course, we're in the middle of the great American lockdown and we're seeing Hollywood terminate long-term projects. More on that in a moment. But timing is everything. 
everything in the great information war, even with the access media and right here on YouTube. Let's go over to our friends at Bleeding Cool. Once again, the great Ichibaka pointed out something that I thought was very interesting. This comes from rebelscum.com, a website I have heard of, but I've never gone to it, so I can't say if it's good or bad. And they had an interview with Chuck Tessieri, the president of Diamond Select toys. Yes, that same Diamond Select that is affiliated with Diamond Comics Distributors, the monopoly that brought the comic book industry to its knees. I would imagine there are some very requested characters, especially in the very popular mini bus line. The fans would love to see names like Emperor Palpatine, Poe Dameron, Zori Bliss, Babu Frick, Lando Calrissian, C-3PO, and more. Can you speak on when we might see more characters from the final chapter in the nine-film Star Wars saga? Wow, that's pressing it. CT, as I mentioned before, we are working on some. But I have to ask, are you sure there's a lot of demand for these very requested characters? Oh, the overall demand for busts and Star Wars products is not what it was 10 or even five years ago. And this has been well chronicled by a lot of YouTubers, in particular my good friend Jeff at World Class Bullshitters. It's not just a GG issue either. The brand is very strong with The Mandalorian and The Clone Wars, and more new content is to come, but you all know what the production runs on collector products were in the past compared to now. We would very much love to make more products from the new movie. It's not like we're sitting behind our desk wringing our hands, thinking how we can stick it to fans and not make busts they want that will make us money, right? <laughs> we just, as of yet, have not seen enough fans that would want to buy a bust, have that personal affection for some of the new characters that make sense to justify going to production. It's refreshing to hear this from somebody who actually wants to make money. But, for sure, we're watching it, and perhaps as more time passes, fans' affection for those characters will grow. Five years ago? Hmm, what happened five years ago? Anyone? <laughs> so, you may have noticed that I haven't made a Star Wars video in quite some time. Again, it's because I don't care. I didn't make a video on the Let's Get High Republic and the Jedi Karens. While it was hilarious, and quite frankly, this is the snowflake and safe space of Star Wars, and I hope it makes things crystal clear to anyone else who is hanging on out there expecting Disney to turn things around with Star Wars. This is the reality. I hope people start to accept it because Disney Star Wars largely is not made for us. I said this in the live stream yesterday. I did with Critical Drinker and Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, Andre and Tom from Midnight's Edge, and Mahler. Link will be in the description. This is the Star Wars norm now. Kathleen Kennedy isn't going anywhere. The Mandalorian is an outlier. It is not going to be the norm. What we're going to see Disney Star Wars do is muck around in the past with prequels until they figure something out because they do need to do that fast. They still need the billion dollar franchise and they've only got one card to play and you can take this to the bank because it will happen within our lifetimes. Disney will remake the original trilogy and it very well could be female centric. It is the only guaranteed billion dollars at the box office, at least for the curiosity factor and at least for the first film. Other than that, all they have is compartmentalized Star Wars, making a Mandalorian for the OG fans, making a female centric show for those quote unquote new fans that they're looking for that they have been looking for for years and they never will find and the cartoons for the kids and they're not bringing those in either because the toys aren't selling so they will be desperate once the lockdown is over and again the timing of this announcement comes when we're about to see a bunch of long-term deals terminated. Let's go to deadline. Hollywood shutdown headed into new phase as overall deal terminations start to trickle in. We are in week six of the mass Hollywood production shutdown over the thing that shall not be named. There has been little movement on the surface, on the surface, during the past couple of weeks since the first major film and TV company, Disney announced pay cuts and furloughs, which will end up being layoffs. 
There have been isolated moves. Viacom CBS last week let go of contract workers. Indie production companies such as Blumhouse and Anapanura, I can't pronounce that, laid off a handful of executives and support staff, while Disney's Marvel terminated a pair of overall deals. The trickle soon is expected to turn into a flood as major studios start imposing layoffs and begin suspending or terminating a significant portion of their term deals, leading me to speculate that the live-action Star Wars female-centric show for Disney Plus from former Harvey Weinstein assistant Leslie Hedlund might just be another case of Disney exploiting the alphabet community for a little publicity. In isolation, I do not care if the High Republic filled with Jedi Karens exists. I don't care if Leslie Headland's female-centric Star Wars show exists. It's just we can suss out the motivations behind it. We know what Disney is really trying to do here. They know it's not going to bring in the kind of money they need to support this franchise, but maybe it'll be a revenue stream. Maybe it'll be the greatest thing ever made. You know what? Make it, Disney. I dare you. Do it. There currently are no overall packs that are being suspended or terminated at other Disney TV units, most notably the company's biggest TV production entity, Disney Studios. As we approach the traditional eight-week mark, we will likely see the force majeure clause invoked, and I learned what that was yesterday, which is act of God clause, in a slew of deal terminations all over town. Now, when I did my brief stint in Hollywood between 2009 and 2011, I worked at Technicolor and did a lot of side gigs, including some work with Disney. It was a bloodbath after the strike, and there was a lot of productions that were shut down. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next because everything that's being announced, everything that's going forward, even Westworld was announced to get a season four, is really not technically happening until the dust settles. Announcements can be made, things can be put into development, but that green light is the most important thing and that costs money and that is something Hollywood is going to have a lot less of. Now, I have been covering the comic shop crisis for the last month here on YouTube, and you can call it foreshadowing for what's about to happen to Hollywood. And of course, nobody in the access media or the mainstream media is talking about the main problem, the consequences of the culture war, of PC Hollywood, of woke Hollywood, degrading their fan base. Hollywood and the comic book industry and the BBC are in entropy because they've alienated large portions of their audience that they now need. And we'll see if they come back. Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the new New Warriors with Snowflake and Safe Space are going to save the comic book retailing industry. Maybe the Jedi Karens and Leslie Headland's female-centric live-action Star Wars show will save Star Wars. I would say that, like, I, I think white women need to kind of step up their game, to be quite honest. Like, <laughs> sorry, but I'm calling, I'm calling you bitches out. I got so caught up in, like, what kind of terminology I was supposed to be using and being politically correct. Like, like, because, <laughs> um, like, like, I, that, that, but, but, like, it's just, like, and, and, and so saying, like, I was, like, Wow. Um, uh, I was like, but, um, but, but, you know, um, uh, and, um, and, um, like, I would like, as, as, like, I'm saying, like, like, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> to really, you know, I, I reached out to my, you know, um, uh, the, the women that I respect who are, who are, are not white. I'm rambling. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> if you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, well, I thank you for listening this long. Everybody have a great day. Please be safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Nerdorotic.com. Please subscribe.